Good morning, everyone. Lord bless you as we meet in the name of the Lord. So um, I'm looking for a good time today. We are going to have a baptism right after the meeting. So Laura's going to be baptized. So we go to the river, the usual place, and uh, may the Lord bless her, especially this day. All right, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather together, we just want to commit this time to you, and we ask your blessings upon the time, and the blessings upon meditation, upon your word, and help us just to have our eyes and ears and hearts open to receive what is of you. I would just pray and invite you to come and minister to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, and welcome to the visitors. God bless you. It's good to see you. Well, let's just sing a few songs for you. It's burn, burn, Holy Spirit, burn in me. <coughs> burn, burn, Holy Spirit, burn in me. Sit my heart on fire. Raising the dead, give me the power that Jesus had through the blood that was shed. Burn, 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 Holy Spirit, burn in me, sit my heart. of God, isn't it? Something beautiful, something good. So But he made something beautiful. 
that song thy word is a lamp unto my feet you may have to help me with the verses i don't know the verses too well but let's um get us started thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my paths thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path Another one here. Heaven came down. Hallelujah. Heaven came down. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender compassion. The need of my heart Shadows dispelling With joy I am telling He made the darkness in heart Heaven came down And glory filled my soul When at the cross The Savior made me whole From above, God is the family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love. Oh, what a standing is mine. Ah! 
passing of time. I have the future in heaven for sure. There in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. may be seated you know heaven came down that's not just a song that actually is an experience Amen. and when you receive the Lord and and you just received the supernatural you never forget I, I don't I always takes me back 40 years when I sing that song <laughs> heaven came down I was driving a car and heaven came down and then the Lord had to drive <laughs> it was wonderful and still is Praise the Lord. Uh, just uh, a couple of announcements. Um, uh, Jean and Sue are not well, so we'll pray for them. And Emma is still in the hospital as far as I know, or is she home now? Emma had, a, I think, the appendix out or something. Um, this is, uh, recovering with Chris. And we also want to pray for Margaret. She's... Uh, still recovering as well so um do we have any other prayer requests this morning unspoken yeah unspoken okay well perhaps we pray first for those requests and then see if anybody has a testimony to share heavenly father we come in the name of jesus christ the one we trust in and the one you sent the one we have faith in and the one who said whatever you ask i will do it lord we want to unite in prayer and bring these matters before you we pray for uh, sister sue and brother jean as, as they're not well today that you would touch them and minister to them even now and heal them and i know you have healed them i just pray that your healing hand be up on them and i pray also for emma that you help her to recover and we thank you for healing and we pray also for uh, sister margaret that you would touch her and and completely restore her to perfect health lord we don't want to see a part healing we want to see a complete healing which is coming her into your hands in the name of lord jesus christ and father there are unspoken requests here this morning and we all have some of them lord and we just thank you that you know our hearts you know our concerns know our our uh, battles i just pray that you would just meet the need this morning in the name of lord jesus christ we commit all these matters in your hands amen amen, amen. 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 who's got a testimony this morning anyone brother ian i'll give you a microphone so we all can hear you Just um, when Brother Albert said he can remember 40 years ago and I can remember I was at New Brighton and Christchurch and Ray Comfort, they were prophesying and I went up and he, he, he laid his hand. I think I was moving to the West Coast and um, I don't know, probably a few of you heard of Ray Comfort but he prophesied um, over me and said, the, the word will be a light unto thy path. And um, oh, how does it go? You know, uh, the, word, the word will be a light unto your path. And um, it's go, uh, um, to your soul. And, you know, that would be 40 years ago. And I, I can't quite 
photo, but I, I know what it means for me. And at the time, I thought, oh gosh, I didn't really understand it because I was a new Christian. And, um, but I can see now that um, the word is where it's at. That's the anchor. That's what I'm going to hold on to. And I just want to have the right understanding and forgiveness for where I've, um, for where I've uh, not necessarily misunderstood, but let the flesh have its way. Um, but the, the word is, is still true. And that was prophesied over me, and here I am in church 40 years later. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Brother Nene. So praise the Lord. I thought I could share this with the church. Um, just got uh, something posted on WhatsApp, um, uh, brothers and sisters in Wellington, and it just blew my mind. Now, because it taught me to know where we are, and if we do, then we get encouraged and refuse to bow our heads in sadness or whatever the devil turn our way. So, Abraham said, when Christ was born, the five stars lined up, right? Because um, the sign happens first in heaven before on earth. And that typed, the star line up typed, typed the birth of Christ. And then in his own day, he talked about the, um, the media was uh, said about the five stars line up again. And he said it was the infant bride. That was in the days of his ministry. And then June this year, the five stars line up again. Jupiter, Mars, uh, Saturn, and Mercury lined up. And Abraham said, is the bride coming to maturity? So you see where we are, and he said, is the word uniting with the bride? And what happens after uniting is the marriage, or during uniting is marriage. So what happens after marriage? Then the bride and bridegroom will go to reception. And that is now the marriage is going on now. The bride is coming to maturity. Bride, look up for your redemption is nigh. God bless you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? All right. Um, this isn't actually my testimony. It's Sister Sue's, but she told me last week, and it was such a blessing. I just can't go wasted. <laughs> Um, she was had her family up for a visit, so she took the children and the grandchildren to the to the mount, and they spent five hours over there and walking up the mount, around the mount, and all up and down the beach for five hours. And then about four o'clock, they went back to the car, and Megan said she that was the daughter she she uh, couldn't find the keys, had lost them somewhere in that five hours. And they all sort of ran off in different ways to try and hunt for these keys. And Sue just walked out onto the beach, onto the sand, and she just prayed. And she said, Lord, I don't deserve anything from you, but we really need those keys. And she just kicked the sand, and bang, they were right there on her feet. And um, that was just the Lord. So, yeah, that was great. <laughs> Thank you. You know, Sister Sue... Could have shared the testimony, but she's a bit shy. But we don't need to be shy when the Lord does something. We need to rejoice and shout up from the rooftops. Amen. Amen. Well, as I mentioned before, just after the meeting, we're going to have a baptism. Sister Laura is going to be baptized. And uh, did you want to say something to Laura? No, not now. Okay, we wait till we're at the river, eh? All right. 
So uh, we, we just go to the Wairua River straight after the meeting and uh, have the baptism there. Amen. Well, let's sing a few more songs. Um, I've got here Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up and let me stand, my faith on Him. Aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Scale the ambos high. Of glory bright, but still I pray till him I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher. Amen. I've got a, another one here. Cause me to come to thy river, O Lord. You see, that's where we get the waters of life. And that's where we want to go. Cause me to come to thy river, O Lord.
we've got another one here I am waiting here I am waiting the answer to all my longings. Christ is the answer.
last one we sing before we read the word of God. I saw love, mercy, and grace. <clears throat> I so love what key are you in? Okay. I so love mercy and grace. I so love mercy and grace. I read uh, Psalm 42 verse 2 my soul thirsteth for God for the living God when shall I come and appear before God amen you may be seated that's King David said that my soul thirsteth for God for the living God and really that should be us as well there's always different mixed multitudes. Wherever you go, whoever you speak to, you have mixed reactions and you have mixed multitudes. I call this little message, ready to meet him. You know, when you're ready to meet him, you rejoice and you feel or uh, comforted that you're on the right place, in the right place, on the right track. And if you're not ready, well, if there is time to get ready, get ready. But my soul thirsteth for God. Now, I don't know if you if you ever heard that, but uh, Brother Brandon preaches a message thirsting for life, and he emphasizes the fact that we have been born with a thirst, but we should not thirst after the things of the world, but the things after God. That's what it's all about. Now, we have that thirst in us. I remember when I was young, I was thirsting so much for everything. I had to try everything. I had a bit of a, a uh, reputation that I get so enthused about something, and then it, it wears off. Because that thirst, that water, or what, what do you want to call it, it never satisfies. Never satisfies. Then... Uh, you know, I wanted to go to a judo club. Okay, once I threw a few people around and all that, the fun was over. Then I'm thirsting for something else, and then I needed to go on another adventure, and then I needed to ride motocross, and I needed everything, thirsting for the things. Eventually, I, I was so thirsty for more and more. I tried everything, nothing quenched that thirst. So I traveled around the world, ended up over here. <laughs> It didn't do it either. But when heaven came down, when Christ came, that quenched the thirst. And now I have a thirst for more of God. And I think we have, when we once tasted the pure water of God, we don't want to thirst after things of the world anymore. But you know, when people thirst after things of the world, we can tell them over and over, that's wrong, you shouldn't do that, and that's not a Christian way of doing it. But hey... It's the grace of God that brings you to, to that place where you can see it. I just uh, had a few long talks with people yesterday and sort of realized, yes, the Lord is doing a work. If you tell somebody, hey, you shouldn't do that, or you shouldn't smoke, or you shouldn't drink, you shouldn't get drunk, you shouldn't do this, or you shouldn't do that, they know it down in their hearts. They know it. 
You don't actually have to tell them. You see, it's the grace of God that does makes you what you are. I listened to a, a, a message by an old preacher. His name is Brother Tom from America. And he was laying out uh, Romans 8. And he was saying, justified. We're justified. He said, what have you got to do with this? Nothing. Sanctified. What, what have you got to do with it? Nothing. It's the work of Christ in us. That's the grace of God. And, you know, when somebody has not actually received that, it's, you know, you can tell them and tell them and tell them. What did Paul tell the uh, prison warden who wanted to kill himself when he said, what must I do to be saved? All he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, the, and, and you and your household will be saved. He didn't give him a list of instructions what to do which church to go to, how many times a day to pray or anything like that, the Holy Spirit will get a hold of you and tell you, teach you all these things. It's wonderful, you know, when you, when you look at that. I've been communicating with a man overseas. I met him several years ago. I couldn't remember him. But uh, he wrote to me uh, about three weeks ago. But one thing, he has somehow experience in the Lord. And the word became so alive and he can't stop reading his word and meditating upon the Lord. He can't stop. And, you know, as a result, he, he wrote to me <laughs> because he identified with me as a Christian. He obviously didn't a few years ago. But then one thing he wrote, he said, my heart thinks just like the word. I thought that was a wonderful statement. My heart thinks just like the word. And I thought, no, he's got something. <laughs> he's got something. So I'd like to read you a few uh, scriptures here. John 3, verses 6 to 8. Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. I like that verse. I really like that because we're not living according to a program or church instructions, or, or, or whatever. We're living by the Spirit of God. And He leads you into all truth. He leads you in, in exciting ways. And uh, it's marvelous when you live by the Spirit. It's never a dull moment. You know, it's really a wonderful life. And sometimes He leads you in places where you are a witness. You may be uh, uh, wronged by somebody, but you know it. You stand before the Lord, and they wronged me. I know, thank you, Lord, that I can overcome and pray for those people. Whatever it is, the Lord leads you into all truth and into those ways when you live by His Spirit. But before you're born of the Spirit, you live by something. You may be led by very good religious ideas. You may be led by what the church tells you to do. I mean, there are people, uh, they're told what to do, to knock on doors and hand out uh, a pamphlet from their church. You know, they're told what to do. But when you're led by the Spirit, you don't do that. You know, we're all different when it comes to that. I, uh, years ago, I went to, to Australia with a friend, and we were doing an outreach trip. <laughs> So we ended up in, in an opal mining town in uh, Lightning Ridge. I've been there before once. So uh, we went there and we made this little, we called them first aid kits. But it was a New Testament in it, a few pamphlets and a couple of tapes. So we made these little packets. And he wanted to go knock on doors. Whoa, that's just not me. I, I'm not a door knocker, you know. So... He went by himself knocking on doors. And I went 
driving around the opal mines, and then I saw, or wandering around, saw uh, s some people standing outside the mine shaft, and one waved, and so I went over there, talked to them. Next thing, we stayed there. Oh, we had fellowship, and we were able to share the gospel. But you see, we all led differently. You can't say, now you go and hand out, and you, you should do about 50 doors today, and you should do that many. No, you may not even call to do that. So you have to be led by the Spirit. Amen. You have to learn to appreciate others who are led by the Spirit if they go a different way, because we don't know. So I'd like to read you a quote here from, from Brother Brandon. He says, the Bible said, love not the world, neither the things of the world. And if you love the world, the love of God is not even in you in your life you're only emotionally mentally worked up with some kind of churchianity some kind of theology that's been taught you and never in your life have you ever come face to face and met jesus christ and been born again for when you once fall in love with christ the world dies right then for eternity. Isn't that interesting? It doesn't mean you can't enjoy things of the world. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy a, a nice meal or, or, or whatever it is, but it's no longer priority. It's what, Lord, where do you lead me today? What is acceptable? What, you, you serve him. You walk before him. And that is really what a new birth does because you're then born of the same spirit as he is and you want to not want to you do agree with it i mean this i always say the spirit that wrote this word if the same spirit's in here ought to agree with it <laughs> so that's a good good way to put it for when you uh, read that again for when you once fall in love with christ the world dies right then for eternity for you sealed by the Holy Ghost until the day of your redemption. And you are dead and your life is hid in God through Christ. And sealed by the Holy Ghost. Your destination is determined right then when you're sealed by the Holy Ghost. So when you're sealed by the Holy Ghost, what's your destination? To meet Christ. Amen. To meet him in the air. To, 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 if you die, to raise from the dead. You know, that's settled. Right then, it's the same, you know, you hear this quite often. If Christ would be here, he couldn't heal you because he's already done it. You know, it sounds, you have to say the whole thing, otherwise it sounds wrong. But because he's already done it, it's been settled even before the foundation of the world, the Bible says. So that our destination has been already settled. So I'm, I'm very happy about that one give us one more here for some 30 years lord i've cried out through this valley here that message i haven't moved one inch from it from where i started just the same message the same thing calling people back not to a sensation but to an experience of meeting god and being born of his spirit or what will be left but judgment. Them who's rejecting that message, Lord, there's nothing left. So once you reject something, you haven't got it, it's offered to you. So talking about accepting what God offers. We have to accept what God offers. Hallelujah. It's not sort of humble, oh, I'm not good enough for this. You never get it. You know, there's another statement, you know, a quitter will never win a race. You know, I, I, I've been starting to play chess with my wife a bit. And, you know, the, the moment she loses the queen, she goes, oh, I'm finished. You know, can't have it, you know. But you still can win. Or you still can at least get a draw. But if you quit, you haven't got a single chance for it. <laughs> so let's never quit. So um, we are Christians born of his spirit, washed in his blood, looking for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's another quote. 
So accept the word of the Lord. You know, it's a matter of accepting. It's not a matter of knowing it, learning it. We, we've gone through that many times. It's a matter of being able to accept it personally. Very well-known story. Talking about accepting the word. Luke 1 from verse 26. And the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Yeah, you know, that was the word from the Lord. And sometimes you, it's, it's not what you normally hear. It's sometimes a bit strange and you can be a bit troubled because it's something from above. So... And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said Mary unto the angel. Now here it comes the natural side, of course. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? <laughs> you know, with God all things are possible. That's so wonderful. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, it's not related to, to what I'm saying, but still, you know, overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. And you know, people, uh, when you talk to Trinitarians, say, who is the father of Jesus then? Is it the father or is it the Holy Spirit? <laughs> you know, here she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost and he calls my, my father, uh, you know, I do only what the father shows me because it, God is a spirit and he's a Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, it's just I wanted to put it with it. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. And Mary said, now here it comes, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Amen. And the angel departed from her. That's where we should find ourselves, be it unto me according to your word. So we need to hear from God. That's the first place. I mean, we hear many, many well-meaning people saying things. I've done that too. You know, saying things, you shouldn't do this and you do this and whatever. Well-meaning. But you have to hear from God. And then say, be it unto me according to thy word. I really like that. So we want to be ready to meet him, but we're only ready to meet him if we accept what he sent our way in the first place. Now, there's another one. Just There's so many scriptures we could read, but I'll just give you another example. This one was not a Christian in that sense. You know, Pharaoh in Egypt, They put uh, Joseph to prison there. We know Joseph was 
of the Lord, on the reign of the Lord. It says here, and he's a type of Christ in that sense. Then in Genesis 41, I read from verse 14, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamt a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, thou, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh the answer of peace. You know, he didn't take, oh, yeah, I've got that gift, you know. I mean, people have gifts, but he glorified God right there. and said, it's not me, it's him. So it's not me interpreting, speaking to you, telling what it is. It's him telling you. He needs to reveal it to you so he can pass it on. So what have you got to do with that revelation? Is the grace and mercy of God. So to God be the glory when it comes to that. But, you know, many times people get so caught up, they get a gift from the Lord, and then it's so, you know, when I laid hands on him, he was healed, you know. Or, which brother was it? Oh, brother so so Yeah, he, he just said this, laid hands, and he was healed. So the attention and the glory then goes to the vessel rather than to Christ. And let's not do that. So Pharaoh tells his dream. And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood up on the, the bank of the river, and behold, there came out up of the river seven kine. Kine is cows. Seven kine, fat fleshed and well favored, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them, poor and very ill favored, and lean fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill favor kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. So the, the uh, we, we know that the, the meager, the, the skinny, sick looking cows ate the fat cows. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke, and I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered thin, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And then, uh, and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears, and I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare to me. You know, when you, when you uh, read the scripture, it says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, you know, it's sort of a confirmation. Same dream, a confirmation. So Joseph interprets a dream, and he gives him the word from the Lord. That's the important thing. It wasn't Joseph's uh, doing. It was the word from the Lord to Pharaoh. That's what it was. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. Okay, that's not two dreams, it's one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's so wonderful. God is showing you what he's about to do, what God is about to do. And you know, the Lord shows us what he's about to do. He sometimes said, don't go there or do this. He shows us what, what happened. That's wonderful. The seven good kind are seven years. And seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years years of famine this is the thing which i have spoken unto pharaoh 
what God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. So you should, can say, if you under the sound of the word of God, yeah, favor person. Pharaoh was favored by God. For, for, to, to fulfill the bigger picture, of course, of the whole what's happening after. But it was to favor him to actually hear the word of God. So he said, Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine will, shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very Grievous, grievous. And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. What an interpretation. Where did it come from? From the Lord. <laughs> you know. So Pharaoh was actually confronted with the word of God. So Joseph gives Pharaoh advice, you know, according to what the Lord shown him. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. So he obviously believed. What he heard, you know, he, he heard it and he believed it. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the Spirit of God is? <laughs> Who wants another one if the Spirit of God is in that man? Why do you want to listen to another one or employ another one? So, uh and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Lord. You see, Pharaoh accepted the word of the Lord. Well, it wasn't a prophet coming to preach, or it wasn't that this, or it wasn't. No, it was God's doing. Amen. You know, sometimes that's why it's so important to be led by the Spirit because we could miss something, something God is doing if our mind is programmed to go a certain way or do a certain thing. Being confronted with the Word is one thing, but to accept it is another. Very different. What would have happened to Egypt if Pharaoh would have said, oh, look, another dream, you know, you, you, I've heard these stories before. How could that be? You know, we never had seven, year, seven years of famine or, no, no, I don't believe that. And, and then, oh, yeah, it looks good. We are prospering and, and all that. Why should it stop? And after seven years, they would have all died of famine. And, you know, it's wise to accept the word of the Lord. And it's also wise to, like the Bible says, to uh, uh, prove the word. You know, is that of God or is it not of God? And then if we know that is God speaking, like Mary knew that's God speaking, be it unto me according to thy word. According to thy word, I will do it. And that's the same for us. So listening to God will result in life and blessings. Thirst for the things of God. Only God's living water, water will produce life. Amen. 
that's that's a fact. The water of the world offers that the, the water the world offers is poisonous. It keeps you thirsty and it will kill you at the end. You know, it's not uh, you killed in instantly. Sometimes you are. People are killed instantly. Many people have been killed instantly uh, going to the wrong place. But you see, slowly but surely, it gets you down, gets you down. You more, you need more, you need more, and you're never satisfied, never satisfied for a season. You know, some people, if I only would have that new car or whatever it is, or if I only could get married and then all is fine, or if I only could travel overseas, you know, if I only could have a big boat or what, whatever it is, you know, sometimes that longing for these things never satisfy. You can have them all. You, if you have Christ, you can have them all, but you can also leave them. You know, you're not... Uh, uh, ruled by them, but if you haven't got Christ, that's probably the best substitute you have. But who wants a substitute when you have the real thing? Amen. Amen. Can we hear the Lord speaking? That's that's the question we have to ask ourselves. Can we hear the Lord speaking? I believe we can. Do we believe that it is the Word of God? You know, often we, we can challenge people, do you believe this is the whole word of God? Just yesterday on the way home, I drove past a Bible camp in Nongataha. I think it's run by a brethren church or somebody. I don't know who, who's running it. You know, I wanted to have a little con convention once for the people here. And I uh, contacted them if we can hire the place for a weekend because it's empty most of the time you know I got the forms to fill in and to sign I mean most was reasonable but then there was one thing you're not allowed to speak in tongues <laughs> man and the Bible says it Paul said forbid not speaking with tongues so I would go to them, no, I don't, but go to them and say, here, rip it out of your Bible because you don't believe it. You know, it's serious stuff. You learn something. You know, they probably have come across some over-enthused Pentecostal movement where they all spoke in tongues and lived a worldly life as can be, and that can't be of God, you know. Keep away from that. Fair enough. But that doesn't do away the real thing. That's why I'm saying it's so important to have the real thing and not the substitute. Well, that was that one. <laughs> but to take it a step further, I went to a church. They came out of Catholicism. And you know, the Catholic teach, you baptize your baby and now it goes to heaven. If it's not baptized by the church and dies, it goes to hell. You know, they have these ideas. If it's baptized, now it's saved. And this church, which came out of it, didn't believe that we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, they preach, not by the water of baptism, which is true. But that does not mean we do away with baptism, but they did away with baptism. You know, it's the same thing as this brethren with uh, speaking in tongues. Anyway, we don't want to go to those extremes. So if we hear the Lord speaking, then we want to accept it. Do we believe the word? Do we accept it in its fullness? In its fullness. I've got one more, more scripture uh, I like to read in, in, in closing on that line, which I believe is very up to date for us. Well known, Matthew 25 from verse 1. Jesus says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, 
there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Amen. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also those other versions, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now that is a parable the Lord shares. Okay. When he talks about the virgins, he talks about the church. Half is foolish and half is wise. Half has the Holy Ghost and half hasn't got the Holy Ghost. That's really what it is. You know, there's three, three groups, really, like three kinds of believers, three kinds of churches. You know, you have the bride of Christ, I believe that, the real believer who is born of his spirit. That is the bride of Christ. That is the wise virgin because the oil, the Holy Ghost, is in the vessel. They took it in their vessels, okay? The other ones, the foolish ones, they had light in the lamp. And you know, anyone who goes to a church where the Word of God is preached and they listen to sermons and, and anointed sermons of preachers, they have light. But it's not in them. We need it in the vessel. So then there is the unbeliever who can care less. So the unbeliever would not even want to go near the uh, nearer church. You see, the true believer, the foolish ones, you know, the make-believer, and the unbeliever, who, who couldn't be bothered about anything. Now, the make-believer, the religious people, with their understanding, who often can preach great sermons, but never die to self and never were born again. You know, you can be an absolute good preacher if you read the Bible, if you can speak well, read spoken word books and listen to sermons, and then you can preach really, really well. And you can not say, that's not right, or that's, uh, but that is not the Holy Spirit in you. You know, it's, it's like you learn everything and then you come into a situation where you have no scripture for, but you've got the Holy Ghost who tells you which way to go. And uh, so the worst place is to be religious and not being born again. That's the worst place to be in. So like I said, the unbeliever did not bother to go and meet Jesus. They didn't bother about it. But all the virgins believe the word. You see, that's the whole thing. The foolish and the wise believe the word. We go out to meet the bridegroom, he's coming. They all believe that. That's why, why they went out to meet him. So it doesn't say, say oh, they, they didn't believe it and so they stayed home. No, they were believing it. But only the wise had oil in their vessel and only the wise were born again. And, you know, we, we, we can preach uh, and, and, and live the perfect life and everything without being born again. We can. But we need that life of Christ in us. Amen. And that's the only thing that gets you there at his coming. That's why it's essential to preach that and not to, to feel satisfied with knowledge, not to feel satisfied. You know, this morning uh, in a bathroom I saw a, a cart, carton, there was some 
some uh, cream in it, you know. My wife buys cream, face cream or something. They're supposed to make you beautiful or whatever. But, you know, there was a list of over 30 ingredients written on it. And most was, you know, like uh, words you wouldn't even know. A list of 30 plus things. And, you know, you can learn all these things and what it does and what it's supposed to do for you and all that. But there's two things. You apply it, you have all the ingredients on your face, whether you understand it or not. <laughs> if you accept what the Lord gives you, you don't need to understand everything, but you receive Christ. Amen. But knowing everything about it, it, it still doesn't do it. We need to actually accept and receive it. Anyway, so I go just uh, one, one or two more thoughts here. The Apostle Paul was like a foolish virgin until he made, met Christ on the way to Damascus. He was zealous serving God he thought he was. He was serving the church and their philosophy, but he wasn't led by the Holy Spirit. So he could not serve God. But then, on the way of, to Damascus, the Lord himself came and called out to him. And he had the chance to receive Jesus Christ right then and there. And he did. And then the Lord led him on to baptism, to the next step, next step, and be, he became a mighty apostle. But it had to take that. Before that encounter, he knew everything. He knew so much because he studied the word. He was diligent and, and everything. He was serving God, he thought he was. But after he received the Holy Ghost, he said, look, I count the things are new, dung, he said. Because it's not by that knowledge, I didn't go anywhere with it, but the Holy Spirit leads me. Amen. And the angel of the Lord came to him. And then he was uh, on a ship to go to Rome, and they got into a storm, a real bad one, and they thought they're all going to die. And he said, be of good cheer. The angel of the Lord came to me last night and he told me, you know, what to do and, and all that, and you're all going to be saved. But, you know, Paul did not even have a doubt. You know, he was in chains and they were about to kill all the prisoners, you know. He wasn't worried because the Lord he met on the way to Damascus, the same Lord said to him, you are going to be a witness for me in Rome. So on the way to Rome, <laughs> you have all the disasters. And you know, the bride is called to be ready and go in a rapture. No matter what happens before. We stumble and trip and, and are attacked by the enemy and storms all around us. So who cares? We've got the promise and we hang on to the promise. Isn't it? So, let those storms not scare you. We all have storms in life. We all do. But let's not be scared of storms. We hang on to the word, the promise, which the bride is going to meet him in the air. And I'm waiting for that one. All those in the upper room, the day of Pentecost, who accepted the promise of the Lord. You know, Luke 24 and 49 and behold, I sent the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Hooray. Now, I don't know how many started in the upper room, whether it was 120 or were there 300, but those who waited, I think about 10 days or something, they believed. And sometimes probably people thought, we have such lovely fellowship. Maybe that's it, you know, or, or whatever. But then after 10 days, there was no doubt 
there was the Holy Ghost. He came down like a mighty rushing wind, and nobody ever doubted that this was the promise Jesus promised to come. Let's not run with substitutes. Let's look for the real thing. You know, all those of us who had been born again, had a born again experience. Prayer, we, we cry out with all the other Holy Ghost filled believers. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, some people, oh, you don't want him to come right now. You know, I've heard people say that. No, no, I've, I've, uh, yeah, he's coming, but it might, maybe in a thousand years, but you know, they want to believe. But no, they don't come amiss with my life. I'm not really. That's basically what they're saying. But look, I, in closing, I read this lovely scripture here. We all know Revelation 22, 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. Let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will let him, whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. What wonderful words. But it is for us to accept and to come for the real living water and not for the substitutes or anything like that because it is real. It is real. Praise the Lord. Can we just pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace in our lives. Lord, even to knock on our heart's door and, and confront us with the word of God, confront us with the truth and giving us the grace to accept it. Lord, wonderful when we see who you are and what you're doing and how pure and holy you are, Lord. And all we can is say thank you, Lord, and accept what you've done for us and what you're doing for us. And Lord, we believe that your coming is close at hand. We believe that promise that we will meet you in the air. we be transformed, Lord, into a heavenly body like yours, Lord, and meet you in the air. And even those who've gone on before us, Lord, you raise them up first. I just want to thank you, Lord, for these wonderful truths and promises we have in Christ Jesus. I pray for each one of us here that we may just turn our eyes to you and thirst after the things of God and not the things of the world. And Lord, when we still have a thirst for the things of the world, that means we still have a, a thirst that needs to be quenched. But may it be the living water of God. I just commit us into your hands and also pray again your blessings upon the baptism and uh, whoever you want to hear in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, let's just sing. Um, I'm one of them. They were in an upper chamber. They were in an upper chamber. Is that too high? Oh, one of them. Sorry, there was the other one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> one of them. How does it start? They were gathered in an upper room. It's coming. They were gathered in the upper room. Yeah. They were gathered in the upper room for praying in his name. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost and powerful service came. And now what it is for them that time can do for you the same. I'm so glad that I could say I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Though these people may not find the most of worldly fame, they have all received the Pentecost, baptized in Jesus' name.
I'm one of them. And you know, once you are one of them, you stay one of them. We don't have to be ashamed to be one of them. I'm proud to be one of them. <laughs> hey, that's so good. That makes real family, doesn't it? When you're one of them. Now, you, you know, sometimes when we have the promise of God and we accept it and then the storms come and all these things, it can dampen our spirits, you can say. But despite what happens, just stand up and rejoice and praise God anyhow. You don't have to feel like it. You just have to hold on to the promise of God. And he never fails. He cannot fail. Let's finish with this one. And God bless you. And we go down to the river. And those who would like to come to witness the baptism, and those who don't know where the river is, we can show you. He cannot fail for he Thank you.